I just like to say that we are really happy to be invited to such an event and really happy that such an event is going on in Ljubljana. Um, and, um, and another thing that from yesterday, a reaction is that we saw that a lot of different actors in public space, um, we are so uncertain. Uh, uncertain, I noticed, because like when we go to architectural lectures, there are uh, big architects go, uh, talking about architecture and they are all sure of, in what they are doing. And yesterday I noticed that we are all pretty unsure and also my lecture is full of questions because through all our, question, uh, through all our projects we do question ourselves things and try to answer things that, yeah. So, um, me and my colleagues, we, we all studied architecture in Ljubljana and I can, I can say I enjoyed my studies. We, we also went on a lot of trips abroad. We saw a lot of good architecture and we, uh, I could say we, we were really trained good how, how to make good architecture. And the question how is, was here um, really important and it was how to make buildings, how to design furniture, how to make good urbanism. But uh, when we were on these on this visits, visits um, we were asking, we, it was like maybe the smell, the light, the atmosphere, or the colors that inspired me. And it was not how this architecture was made that we were watching it. So I started, or we all started to ask ourselves like different questions, like what or why? what defines cities, uh, why I feel comfortable in certain place or certain city, what kind of places certain cities need or have, why to make changes, what kind of changes, and I think these are more the questions that should be asked first in an issue of public space, and then uh, it should be before how. And today I would like to show you some project through which we experience these questions, and before I would like just to say a few words what we like about public spaces. It was uh, yesterday discussed a lot, and but our personal like what we how we think the city it is like an organism made out of physical structure and the life inside. And we could say a uh, physical structure. We have buildings, streets, squares, parks. Public space in its physical presence, and on the other side we have life, which is defined by people living in the city. Uh, which they gave its typical content and also properties. And we could say um, to, it is a lot, uh, on this conference we talk a lot about um, temporary or permanent. And this organism, it is constantly changing, it is constantly decaying and growing. So um, maybe these two questions, these two things are not so important. And um, I like. I, I like, um, yeah, I would read the sentence because the city or the public space, we can perceive it in the same way. And as Fernando Barrero claimed or asked him, himself, it, uh, should we change our way of thinking about public space or should we perceive urban public space as events and processes rather than as places? And even if we say places, and if we say public spaces, um, then we have a lot of questions. What is, like, who is, who is the public? Am I also the public? And if I'm the public, how can I domesticate the place? How can I act or react in the, this space? And also, how, what can I do as an expert with the knowledge that I have? And what can I do as an individual? And um, the Spanish group Rehabitar, they, they said that the most um, clearest example of domesticating public space is sweeping the streets. It is a spontaneous act. act. We saw a lot of these examples today in uh, Ryan's presentation of India. There, um, in, in Europe cities, we can see it in the frame of actions or projects we do, but not like a spontaneous act. And it is a far in comparison for us because this was the way we, uh, we started, actually. Because uh, the sweep, it was a tool that we had at that time when we finished studies. And we, we started with this tool. And even sometimes, just as uh, maybe as an image, I see it as a better tool to deal with public space than a bulldozer. And 
maybe to understand um, the conditions we were in in 2004, um, or uh, these conditions bring us to start the project. So I, I would like to show three, three slides of Ljubljana. Um, and it was like, yeah, uh, you saw yesterday the presentation, the touristic presentation of Ljubljana, and if it was the same picture uh, that Mikkel uh, used. And um, yeah, it, it is nice medieval city center. We have Baroque facades, Secession, we have a important Plechnik imprint. We could say nice and small European capital. But at that time, in 2004, when we when we did uh, made a close up or closer look at uh, the public space as we perceive it now, it doesn't really exist. Neither in minds of citizens, neither in minds of uh, like government decision makers, city government. There were buses driving over the three bridges, and we could say that the public space was an issue of a traffic. And walking in the city was more like an adventure than enjoyable inspiration. And even um, there was in 2004 or five, it, there was an article in newspaper where um, landscape architect claimed that Slovene people we are we, we are all coming from countryside. So um, we are like we go for all our free time we spend in countryside back. So kind of we don't need urban life, we don't need public space, and this was a conclusion. And it was like we came, at that time we finished our studies, we were all working abroad, Vienna, um, then um, Belgium or Spain, and then we came back and we were asking, how is that the Slovene people are so special that they don't need public space if all the others they need it? So um, that cannot be, and we said, it, this conclusion in the article triggered us in a way. And it was, for us, uh, this apathy was challenging, and so we started. And we asked ourselves what we can do. And then, since then, it is like 10 years uh, since we are active in Ljubljana public space, and we performed about 60 exhibitions, actions, temporary installations, performances, events. Through each project, we learn something new. Through each project, we ask ourselves some new questions or try to answer. And each project goes, uh, and yeah, um, in each project, we also take a different role. And uh, today, um, I would present you four projects or four, four different roles that we, we were trying to play to answer the questions. And first, like I said, we started as a local initiative, and it was really simple. We, we found a lot of places in all city center of Ljubljana that were neglected. These were like courtyards or small streets, as Mikkel yesterday showed us from Amsterdam. Or, um, and yeah, we, what we did, we, we found some sponsors, we, we convinced some people, some flower shops to help us we, uh, with friends, and then we just put some installations for one week in these spaces in order to, to show them um, to the public or to that um, in order to get maybe uh, these public spaces in awareness. Um, and so what was it? The, uh, the, the first um, project I could say was a, really a success because like people were happy because we cleaned their um, courtyards, the people living here, and then the citizens of Ljubljana, they were happy because they, they saw some places that they didn't know in the city that they thought they know. And then even the mayor was really happy because at that time Spanish king was in Ljubljana and the city was full of flowers that they didn't have to pay or it was like everybody happy. So, but um, as we heard yesterday, a lot of projects from uh, northern countries of Europe where they search for this, um, this kind of um, challenges. In 2004 and 2005 in Ljubljana, you don't have to search. It was a list full of these challenges. You just have to pick which one you will do first and which one next. So there were parks. We did like we choose 11 parks next year. We put some furniture inside to test how the people would use these parks. And I could say well, like six, seven parks. Oh, these green areas they didn't even ha had a name. So. Um, then, yeah, it was just to try how the people would use it. And in this manner, we, we did go on um, 
In 2006, it was Ljubljanica River. We were talking about before how to mm, bring the river close to the um, to the river banks or to the city. Um, at that time, it was impossible to to um, go with the boat on the Ljubljanica River. So we borrowed some boats on Kolpa River, south of Ljubljana, and we put them in Ljubljanica. And for one week, it was possible to go with the boat um, through Ljubljanica River for free. And um, Tourism Council of Ljubljana, they they saw it as a good um, or. Uh, as a good, uh, so they did it next year and next year, and I don't know, they stopped, I guess, now, but now it's a lot of, we have a lot of touristical boats bringing you along the Ljubljanica River. And um, even if, if we, in, in the middle time, when then we, we, we were working on children playgrounds in the same way, or uh, on the streets, parking lots, was Marco uh, showed before a project, um, and on all different issues, but, uh, and then still, like yeah, last year, uh, it's again theme of uh, water in the city. Um, it is, um, this is a, a square between uh, Ethnographical Museum, um, National Museum, and um, Museum of Modern Art. It's called the Museum Square, and it was designed, it was, I could say, also over-designed, and it is really hard to use it because it was so over designed that yeah and but still the necessity of the um, this district is so big that there are some users but then okay it was also this fountain that was designed but never used because it was too expensive to change or to clean the water and also the fountain was done in the way that it leaked from the beginning um, so um, and it is the property of ministry of culture so uh, the city of Ljubljana, they had last year some finance for um, small uh, or uh, lowering the um, climate change in, uh, climate change or something. So they offered us a, a bit of a money. So uh, yeah, we use it in the frame of Triennale of Modern Art, which, were, which was organized by Ministry of Culture and Museum of Modern Art. And we put boats and uh, water in this river. And it, it is just funny installation. But on the other side, it was like we could say also a lacmus paper to show uh, here not, not so much how the people use it as maybe um, Alex said before. It was just right away when they came, they put clothes on, the children went inside. And it, this was not a question. The question was how to maintain this water uh, how to go over all this bureaucracy, what is safe, what is not safe, and uh, hard questions. And it took us like one month that the Ministry of Culture did press the button to clean the water, because just this was needed, just to press the button. But then in one month, as I said, lacmus la paper, it, <laughs> because it was really dirty after one month. And it, it was not a question about the money, it was a question about collaborating between different museums on the square. Okay, uh, so um, with all this short, like like a local initiative or like art in public space, although we don't like really so much this art um, word in this, we, we somehow highlighted the problems of the place, we show the potentials, we record the reactions of the people and we encourage somehow stakeholders, I could say a different groups, that it is easier to intervene like temporary in a public space. But what we missed in all these projects at the beginning, we were really naive, expecting that the people, that the city government will see how successful maybe hanging mats in the park are, so they will put them and put them there. It didn't happen. So we thought, um, I mean, in this ter long term progress, is that they would use some of the results of these actions for the real um, renovations or how we call public space. Or we also miss that the city government didn't become like, yeah, so much active as I explained. So mm, in some projects we went in a different, we, we take over the different role which was the promoter of the city project. So we were trying to include city also in these temporary installations in a way that we could, that some of the things would be then made for a bit longer time or a bit with more seriousness. So. Um, 
Uh, I would show you one example, and this is the Iprova Street, which also Marco from EPOP showed before, because we started together. Uh, and with, uh, also with associations of Mesto Podvih, and also with the city municipality, it was the city municipality had a program, Civita Selan, at that time. And then in, um, it, uh, it is a river, um, this is not a Ljubljanica, it's a Gradaščica, it flows into the river Ljubljanica, and this is the street, it, it was, it used to be a harbor, it has a nice atmosphere, it has some nice bars, it has, this local people are really attached to the place, and it has a really special character, but yeah, um, you can also see the cars and how the public space is now um, yeah, full of cars. So uh, the first action we did all together um, is that we, we performed a one day street festival. The street was closed for the um, public, uh, for cars. Um, and we included all the, um, like school did the exhibition, then the bar uh, invited some, the Saks bar, we, where there was a jazz bar. So they made some concerts, library under the trees, or some stand-up comedy at the evening. Um, yeah, it was one day of really nice um, gathering on the street. But the more important thing that <laughs> that we all together did is that we invited Jan Gil to have a speech on the street. Um, and there was really a lot of people coming and Jan Gil is an urbanist uh, from Copenhagen who travels a lot and uh, give advices to the city how to make public places according to needs of like pedestrians and cyclists and not cars. So he's yeah, he knows how to talk also, and this was really important, and he's, um, yeah, he has a renome. So he had a lecture on the street, but then, more important, he had a lecture in the city hall. And he had also a talk with the mayor, and at that time, it was really a crucial point in Ljubljana's traffic strategy was, was being prepared at that time, and um, Young Gil came twice more, and it had a big influence, and now our traffic strategy, it looks like this. And it, this was uh, a bit also Young Gil's um, uh, impact, <laughs> or how I say. And um, so another, um, another result of this one day closing the street was also that the city recognized it as a um, nice place and, uh, um, or the place that needed renovation or needed some attention, so they also ordered plans to renovate the, the street, but really like to repave and everything. But yeah, we know the crisis and everything and out of money. Um, so, but I don't, I, I don't really think that it is a crucial point. It's just one of the things that could happen once, but it's not so important. Today, uh, we had again a meeting, meeting with um, inhabitants talking how we could uh, close the street, just part of the street, this year, uh, in 24th of May. We will start it, and during the summer there will be some events performed by um, local associations, and um, yeah, it, there will be a small temporary installation show uh, testing the place how it could live. So, um, and this, the last act, because I, I prepared, okay, uh, as a promoter, we developed, we maybe developed a bit more the potentials of the place, we, uh, and certainly the city government became active because uh, they feel it, it was a part of their activity also. And we did cooperate with local community. But um, if we would stop uh, with the planning, this would mean that the public space w wouldn't be like domesticated, as I said before, or there, the, it could happen, as Anna before said uh, yesterday, like in this small city in Croatia, that nobody used them place, and it then not, doesn't really matter what kind of floor we have. So um, with this uh, today's meeting with the local, uh, maybe we are trying, yeah, to work over and to work on this. And um, in 2010, uh, we started like to play a different role in another big project which is still ongoing and um, somehow we became a promoter of local initiatives or conne um, connection or something. So this is the um, Park Tabor story that goes on since 2009, I guess, 10. Um, a Tabor district, it is close to the city center. It is a part of um, 
quarter center, Ljubljana has quarters and the, yeah. Um, and uh, if you see it is between Ljubljanica river and between um, railway station, uh, and um, there, it has a lot of different institutions besides living. And it was before Second World War uh, or first also, it was an industrial suburb, but now industries went out. So it's a lot of uh, um, like three museums, as I said. Um, maybe I will show. Uh -huh. Okay. Old people's home, um, student housing, um, school kindergarten, some schools here. This is also school. Uh, then we have a sport hall, um, museums, hosp um, yeah. hospital and uh, others is living area. And in the middle we have a park, uh, which is the, the only or the biggest uh, public space in, uh, in the area, if we don't count the museums. Like, we have now also the museums thing. Mm -hmm. the museum's uh, place or something. So, um, uh, in uh, the people, uh, no, in Tuta, in 19, yeah, after the First World War, the Tabor was really important point in, like, in, in the, the people were proud to be Tabor people, they built together this sport hall, and it was a lot of, like, proud to be Tabor, and uh, a lot of history going on there, and an important district, but then, like, slowly in 2010, we made together with Zavod Bunker EPOP, uh, and EPOP, um, a research about, um, like, a questionnaire, and what people said, it's, we don't have enough green spaces, we don't have enough public spaces, like, we, we don't dare to go to the park, because there is just vandalism, and it's too dark in the night, and and then the last question was really for us a surprise. They uh, they were asking where is Tabor, because they didn't feel Tabor. They they felt that they are living in the city center, so they were not uh, connected to to the community. Um, and uh, we it's again if I say we, there is a lot more than Prostoroz, a lot uh, of different associations, a lot uh, also the quarter of center uh, museums, uh, Zavod Bunker was really strong um, a partner. And what we started, we started uh, on three different levels. One was uh, bringing life to park with small events. Um, then just to make some small special interventions because before you noticed the park is nice, it's really nice, it doesn't need much to, to be a nice space. So, and then also there were cars in the park and it was like, okay, once we will also we will try to change these traffic regulations to put out cars out of the park. And uh, in the small intervention special, as I said, it, we put lights, we, we got them somewhere from one installation. Uh, then we cleaned um, bowling um, area. We put some wood on the benches because there were none before. And this was pretty much it. And each year there is some small intervention being done, but it is uh, just according to the needs that we see um, during the event, performing events outside. Last year, for example, we, we got the drinking fountain, what was, was also really important, but yeah. And uh, so how we started uh, making events, we invited all the association that are active in Tabor district to have their activities outside. And because we didn't like want to invent, we have examples for all over um, the world what, what could be done in public space, but we wanted that this is done by the people that live there or for the people that live there, and that it is for free. So there are really numerous events and it will be like on, t on Saturday, the fourth season of events in Park Tabor will start. And it, it's going on from the end of May to, to the beginning of September each year. And what we do, we just deliver or we curate a bit these um, the events. We, we make flyers, we make posters. Uh, and we take care that if there is something, some chairs, that they, the, the association needed to perform event, we put chairs there, or we facilitate with the equipment. So, uh, 
we and we tried a lot of different um, activities already from gymnastic classes to the exchange of toys or repairing of toys to the library under the trees to some um, cinema we had cinema under the trees last year first um, then readings loud readings then uh, and the biggest success or the bi uh, the thing that or where the most people are coming and on which the tabor ge is getting to be known are the Saturday sales now. We have a vintage sale, art market, garage sale, a vegetable exchange, um, bicycle festival, and a lot more. So each year there is something new and we try something new. So, um, and then that the, uh, yeah, and maybe here we could say if we say about the empowerment or if we say if including inhabitants here we could say that that what happened that there are not so many local inhabitants included but because there are a lot of institutions around there are other groups of creative young people coming and the place is empowering them because it is easy to test the activities that they would like to start with in the park because yeah you have the infrastructure it doesn't cost you nothing and if you don't succeed it's okay it, it's a testing ground um uh, and uh, then the third point, which was, yeah, I could say the most difficult and not so funny, but it was to convince the, the city to put the cars out. So that thing happened last year with a really small, inter small spatial intervention. Um, and the Tabor district is not just a park, but since we were active in the park, uh, we, we get to know, and we are, I forgot to say, we are all three living in... Um, in Tabor district, so uh, that we we find also really important. If you like do the long term projects like this, you have to know the the district. You you can yeah. But otherwise, and it's also like this that the project then never ends. You are like all the time in the project because you live in the project, and it's you you take it more seriously also. So um, uh, these are the projects that we uh, that uh, we together or yeah again we together uh, initiated or did in the district tabor uh, in these four years and now i will just jump in vienna for a short just to explain the project that we brought to tabor then uh, in 2011 we were invited to uh, vienna festwochen uh, which is the biggest festival summer festival uh, and it has a section of yeah bringing culture to the people so we were invited in the fifth district with lower income and the the, um, the most uh, uh, foreign people living that we we bring that we do something with inhabitants but we said okay it's how how can we do it it's like park tower four years and um, we, how can we do it in one week? So we said, okay, let's just make a playful installation and uh, try, but to try that um, the, organi the local organization or government would have something out of it, that something would stay. So we put a carpet, this, these are the rests of the carpet, and we made a plan of, this, of the fifth district. Um, and the colors accords to the use of the ground floor area. Yellow is the living, blue is schools, green parks, fast, <laughs> yeah, you, you don't have any parks. So uh, a really densely built area. So you could see here that where the most balloons are, this is this square where the, the carpet is. And just a funny story, because we were asking ourselves whether maybe we should like put a sign to put shoes off, or maybe we should uh, like, buy slippers or something but then there are Turkish and Serbian and Croatian people living so it was just natural that they put shoes off and went on the carpet <laughs> and it was really nice playground that it became because there isn't yeah and okay we uh, and the intention was to collect wishes wishes for the public space or initiatives for public space and each balloon it means each uh, initiative they were collected and given to the city we collected 400 of them, and they, uh, what surprised us, um, and it was important for all our thinking about the project, there were, half of them were for the program and not for the physical changes in the place. So, um, like benches, trees, half of them, but then also the school for hip-hop, I don't know, the, mm, 
yeah, some different theater outside or cinema. So, um, yeah, when we come, uh, and the drinking fountain was done by the city because there was a wish to, to put a drinking fountain. I don't know what they did with the rest, but uh, this was the first result. And then when we brought so much carpet from Vienna to, to Tabor, we said we have to try it. We have to t try in Tabor also. So we put it on the museum's um, square in a frame of a festival, Mladi um, Levi of Zavod Bunker. Uh, in one week, we had a lot of work to rebuild the carpet. We need a lot more green and a lot more gray. <laughs> For gray was not really defined places. <laughs> and it was again some analysis between <laughs> the cities. And we like collected 200 of wishes uh, or initiatives. Uh, and there were less of them because the, the place is not, the people, they don't go through. They don't, there are not so many passers by, but they came, there, there came people with the um, leaflets, with written what they would like to have and they rewrited it. So it was surprising for us that they think about the place and they, they, they take it seriously. So we had to take them seriously also. So that's why I will show some projects that followed. And also some, some program in Park Tabor did follow these uh, initiatives and yeah and at the end we invited mayor of Ljubljana to make closing event and uh, he promised to make a children playground in park tab in in the district tabor so the first one was uh, this is this was the only um, playground um, the uh, in in the district tabor so uh, they gave us a bit of a money but then we also collect some money on the garage sales to to buy color and to make some to to color it together we did some things also with inhabitants together and some things and we we used just the standard equipment that ljubljana city has because it was the only way we could yeah come through with so <laughs> uh, little money um, and uh, another playground, we, we, then in, in the same, yeah, Tabor district is big. And mayor, he did a bit of a mistake because he promised that he will do children playground in front of cinema Dvor. But then all the people from Tabor, they said, hey, this is not Tabor anymore. You have to do it in Tabor. So he had to do both. So... <laughs> um, uh, on the opening of the first one, the children gave him the plans for the second one. <laughs> so, but uh, what we followed, uh, the, uh, which idea we followed by, by designing all this, all uh, both of the playground, is that the playground is a part of a public space. The playground is not a fence, or the playground should not function for the children from two to five, and then. If children are six, they destroy everything, and it's better that they are at home. And what we also notice by children, uh, it's, it's a big theme. I would not like to go deeper into it, but then just another thing that bothers me a lot, that the, people, the, the children, they don't have opportunity to meet older people on the streets or to meet teenagers. Or, so, you know, we, we all put like to five years you are in this fence, when you are five to ten you are in this fence, and then you disappear, and then you come back, and then you destroy everything. And this is just the logical consequence, because you, don't, you cannot make a um, relationship to the place. Um, yeah, so this was just to open, not to close them, and to, to enable also older people to play, or, or like I can go and lie here, and it's not fun, it's not disturbing yeah, or okay and then um, the third project in park in district tabor was chufareva street it is a street which which connects uh, kindergarten to primary school secondary school and uh, uh, students dormitory it has 2000 kids and youngsters going on the street every day the street is four times broken with the really heavy traffic streets and it doesn't, it, so the cars, they come in one, go out, in the second part, go out, it doesn't connect, nothing, it, yeah, nothing. So it would be just easy to close it, but then in the morning when, when children go to school or to kindergarten, the situation is like this. So parents think it's too dangerous, so they all come with a car, even the ones who live in this house, which is on the picture. 
So um, we, we worked with school, with kindergarten, and with uh, uh, this gymnasium. And with uh, youngsters, we built furniture because before they were sitting on the floor in front of entrances of the houses um, and smoking. Now they sit here and smoke. And we just in one part, we managed to close it for the traffic to enable children from vicinity to come uh, walking. And it did make a change uh, because a lot of parents, I have also two kids in this kindergarten, a lot of parents when they meet me, they said, okay, now I tried also to go with foot by foot and it doesn't take me so much time as with a car. So, um, but then you, you first have to do it before. Uh, <laughs> If you would just talk, nobody would believe. And this color, this will disappear in one year. It was just to make, uh, it, it, it's not so important what kind of color. It was important to, to, to uh, make awareness of the problem and not just to, to talk to parents, please come to, uh, not, can you not come with the car? I will come with the car if it's too dangerous to walk. So, and then we, mm, yeah, another story on on the street. Um, the in 2007, the bar, no, ten, uh, the barracks were um, here in this area. There were barracks of the national TV. Um, they were ruined down, and uh, during the night we had to do something, not that the place wouldn't become a parking lot. So these are just the. Uh, um, pipes for canalization, which we put, and we put some greenery inside. Uh, and then after one year, city decided to sell the property. So they, they stopped uh, cleaning it, they stopped bring, uh, taking care of the greenery. Uh, in Like in one month, it was a big mess. <laughs> but then slowly we started working with school and with association of cultural of association of workers in national TV. They are the, the women, they are really active. They put these flowers and you see we have like two times a year a cleaning action. So the park is maintained by people living uh, around and the associations. Um, Day of the neighbor, um, all institutions in, in the quarter of Tabor, we are joined in the cultural quarter Tabor and there is one event once a year, which we perform together, and this is the Day of the Neighbor. It will happen on Thursday next uh, week, 15th of May, so you are invited to join and to walk and see the project of Tower. Yeah. And just the last thing, uh, it is the kitchen. As we all know, the move like kitchens or cooking on the street in Ljubljana, it is forbidden. So, <laughs> um, the, but when we performed events in Park Tabor, we were always hungry. All the people, they went to the nearest grocery shop and eat sandwiches. And, but there were a lot of creative youngsters who would like to cook something, who brought their food, and it was super great food. And so we said, okay, let's make a kitchen. We built a kitchen last year, and yeah, we, we could get uh, like punishment. But we didn't yet, so we are still trying. And the kitchen, um, we are still, yeah, I don't know what will happen, <laughs> but it is forbidden. We don't have the um, permission to do it. But the kitchen is, again, the laboratory as the place Park Tabor at Saturdays is. It enables young groups to try, to try if they can also, like young designers as trapeze, they were cooking here, but then also some really renowned cookers, uh, cooks were cooking in the park, and also just some spontaneously people that came, yeah. So, um, so we uh, we were here like a promoter of local initiatives, and what what was really important, I think, in this four year that it took us four years to put the place in mind of citizens. Because, uh, and, the, the, and what I think also is really important by this activity is that this place enable or empower people to do things. So it, it is the place that empower and not like some um, groups, I don't know. Yeah. And uh, we, we did also encourage some local services. We established a strong network of young creatives and a testing ground for different things. But then, yeah, with all these questions that we said yesterday, we are not sure. Yeah, we are not sure how this could go on. We don't know uh, whether it is needed, that, that it, it goes on for a longer, long time or not. 
Maybe it can stop at f in five years. Maybe it can become self-sustained. Um, yeah, these are the open questions that we still have. And uh, then um, just the last um, project to show. Uh, I hope you're not tired. <laughs> Um, it is a link between low, where, where we somehow we started the project last year and somehow we figure out that what is we, we had we have to become a link between locals and decision makers because there is too much difference and this is the we started to work in South Conasilia which is just over the railway or, um, um, yeah, railway station which is really again close to the city center is one of the um, uh, first uh, wor um, uh, workers' neighborhood built after the war, and um, yeah, and as I said before, I, I show you this bus on three bridges. This was the question at that time, and now we have different questions that bother us, or now we have different issues that we would like to ask. And for example, just question marks because you see the South Co is this try. This triangle is South Conasilia. The only intervention we ask, like seven males or different initiatives, and then in South Conasilia this year, this uh, yeah, some di this small intervention was done. But on the other hand, we have a, par uh, a new apartment building on, uh, uh, on in this area, which has you see how much empty apartments, and then on this side. We have an area of former uh, food industry, uh, which is for at the moment there are a lot of offices, a lot of um, companies that have place here, and the bigger company that maintains the place, um, they earn a lot of money with this, and also there are a lot of jobs, you know, and in South Conceilia a lot of jobless people. <laughs> so why, why we call it degraded area? and why we want to build neighborhood for 2,000 people if we don't care for the neighborhood with 8,000 people, which is just across the street. And why, like, the architecture gives a word to the building. I, I don't say, I don't claim that something is wrong with the building, but just in the broader um, view, um, are these questions uh, that, that we ask ourselves, yeah. Um, and... Okay, when we came to um, to South Conasilia uh, from from advance, you can already know it is the first working class neighborhood in Ljubljana. It was built between 45 and 60. It has 8,000 uh, inhabitants and 2,500 apartments. And what you can also find on internet are uh, that the number of cars went from 500 to 4,000 the number of local associations from 10 really active to two that hardly exist now. And in these 60 years, it's not 50, <laughs> it, it was without any kind of big uh, like uh, intervention from the municipality. But yeah, uh, and there is a big, big confusion regarding land, land register because of the denationalization and back and it was, yeah, and the older apartments are privately owned. So what is now with the um, with the public space where if there is a possibility that the apartment block uh, um, got the, some place, they, they start to build parking lots. And this is the first reaction. So if we let this go further on, we will just have parking lots and it will not be enough of them. It will not be 4,000 even if we do a parking lot in the whole of the South Co. So what to do? And then also there, there is no central activities because if, you, if we look, 8,000 inhabitants, is, it's a small um, municipality of Slovenia that has everything, but yeah, Sausko has post office and a bank and two bakeries and four uh, cutting saloons, <laughs> haircut, yeah, hair shops, yeah. Okay, and... Um, but we didn't know enough. This, this, these facts are not enough to start to work in this because you don't. I was also living five years there, but yeah, you don't know where. So we said we will. Uh, we connected with four partners from the um, local partners, and we started to perform small scale events. We wanted to get familiar with the neighborhood. We wanted to identify the problems, 
get in contact with the local inhabitants and establish trust among them. Uh, and this was just the only goal. We didn't have much more or we didn't know what we would like to do. So, um, yeah, standard methodology or standard tools, um, sale or gardening or uh, picnics or uh, children workshops and maintaining the place. It was the, the goal of last year. And during all the events, we had a model of South Conocilia and we were talking... Uh, about the problems in the neighborhood. We also had some flyers to collect, um, again, ish, um, like some wishes or initiatives. And then uh, we talked with inhabitants and we said, maybe we, we have to sit down and talk a bit more, not just having parties. So we, we made a series of four events, which were... Uh, uh, meetings for South Conacelia. We, uh, we, we look at all these hundred of uh, wishes that we collected uh, and we made four groups with inhabitants. For It was a group for traffic, a group for greenery, a group for um, equipment and group for events. So each one that would like to participate could participate. One could participate with the knowledge of the traffic uh, or one could participate with just going to buy wine or cook some soup to, for picnic. And e each participation was equal and the important. And till the end of the year, we made an action plan with the project that should go on like this year and next year and in the future. And um, we even got a small, small place like 15, 12 square meters between post and bank office and um, we call it locals. And now at the moment, for one month, we have one guy who is employed, um, but he's like social, public works, yeah. So he's he's there four hours a day uh, talking with the inhabitants there. We have a lot of... Um, exhibition of the projects we do together uh, in, in these groups. So we exhibit all there and we give information and we accept for information. So um, out of what we did last year, nine projects developed and will be done this year or we'll, we will start working on them or some will be finished already. And these are locals. This is this small, small community place. Okay, we have four hours a day open, but otherwise it is, everybody can use it. If there is, for example, uh, reading of books or discussing about books, which, which is one, pro, one, um, one hour a day on Mondays, which one lady did, it is open to the public. And she can use it for free. And if it is a rehearsal of a young music group, they have to um, give back to the local community with some work. They, they don't pay for use. So, um, and in this way, it functions um, really good. And, but it, it is small, and for some events, it's just not convenient. <laughs> so, but it's okay for start. So uh, then, um, on the initiative of locals, uh, we started to make a newspaper, which is called Sauchan, and now the fourth edition is being prepared. Um, uh, last year too, and we started like this, that we we did the newspaper. And we had the bad photos, we didn't have a good articles, but we tried to, to say what, what what we all together have to do in Sausko. And then just the photograph called us and said, you have bad pictures, can I make better pictures because I'm photographer and I'm living in Sausko. So this is the story how the, the newspaper is developing now. Um, then uh, we perform... Uh, uh, we will um, still go on with events on Sherkova playground, what we did last year, we did picnics and events for youngsters. Then um, with the group for traffic, we, we made a strategy for public place and traffic because it, it is really a big mess and nobody thinks in a whole and nobody from the decision makers, they do not come to Sausko to see what's going on. So we said we, we have to tell in a way what's going on and we have to make a solution. So now we did 
a project we presented in the in the department of urbanism and now we are discussing with them which form would be the best to go on with what would be uh, would have the most use uh, but still um, this is something but still we didn't want to go just in bureaucracy because it takes too much time and nobody's interesting even the, the guys who were coming to the group for traffic, they would lose interest if there wouldn't be something done. So we detected th uh, these green lines that you see, we detected four, uh, three lines uh, where the pedestrian could go because you cannot walk on the streets, they are parked. There are just cars all over. So we detected some, some lines where you could go not having the traffic all the time. So we start, yeah, it was just um, that we put some signs, how much do you need going by foot? And on, on the floor, we did the triangles, and if you walk from south to the north, you can read a sentence that the rapper from South Conacilio wrote. And go and read it, I will not tell you. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's just some small interventions to show that it is possible to walk through the South Conocilia. Then another story, um, maybe it's here, yeah, South Ki Hrip, Super Hrip. Um, from South Conocilia, there was uh, Philip Stamberger, a famous um, a basketball player who died, unfortunately, last year, and his mother, he would like to uh, donate money for renovate playground uh, where he started and when he teached also younger generations. So uh, he was a friend of local rapper Ruktar Kajwicz, whom we are working. So uh, we together had a workshop with se uh, seven grade of uh, primary, no, yeah, primary school in South Conacilia. So together with these um, children or youngsters, we developed the project, what should be done and how should be done. And we didn't, uh, yeah, we, we so now we are in a stage that we will start to renovate. The wood is already prepared and we will start to make these tribunes in uh, next week and to renovate the floor. But the negotiations with the city, what they will do, whether they will put down the trees or not, it's still going on, or whether they would make some pavements because it's, yeah, it's just impossible. But then we had two weeks ago cleaning action where we discovered the staircase, which was not there before. You can see this picture right up there. You, you don't see them, so we dig them out. Um, and just uh, the last story is about uh, the community home, uh, where there is a community home, it does function just uh, one half of it, but half of it is empty. And even this half which is functioning, it's just um, not for the community. And the, on these meetings that we had with the neighbors, they, they demanded, they, they claimed that this they built it together so they would like to use it. And if you read the regulations, it's just, uh, everything is okay. You could use it even if you're not association. You could get it for free if you're a citizen of Sausko. But it doesn't function like this. So we will start a project now together with uh, um, uh, agency for what? regional development agency. And we will, um, yeah, we had some meetings already with local inhabitants to discuss what are, what are the needs. But, huh? What? We? <laughs> okay, so, yeah, a lot of stories and, um, yeah, a lot of layers. But, okay. Um, so, we did, uh, what, what we did, uh, like, what we are trying to do now, it's not what we saw, that it is a big distance between locals and decision makers who does, does not come or, I don't know, and we are now trying to, to also to inform the decision makers what are the needs and how they could uh, make a dialogue between, uh, with locals and how their solutions that they have or their uh, impacts or their um, implementations that they could do could be better if they would know these issues. And, just two slides more, it's what, what we find it is important or it is sustainable. It is not the place or it, there are not these small interventions, but it is the connections between the groups that uh, participate and uh, the project that go out of this and doesn't have nothing to do with Park Tower or even 
in South Conasilia, you can see on one side all the um, projects and on the other side all the people that are included in this project. So all these um, connections are more important, I think, and more long term, or they bring more. And even in the whole Ljubljana, we have a lot of similar in initiatives that we are. So um, if we all like go and work together, I, I think we, we, we could find an answer. And I think that like, mm. and um, yeah, if there was our wish at the beginning to raise awareness of public space, our goal now is that the local and national, national gover government would take all these efforts a bit seriously. And they have like proudly rewritten EU sentences about empowerment, participation, urban renewal uh, in our strategies. But now it's maybe time to start and to connect all the initiatives and also to start the dialogue, dialogue and understanding about these things on, on higher levels. Thank you.